What's up world, I'm Mr. Vaca, and today I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of all the basics that you need to know about Google Sites in 2021. The first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're logged into your Google account, and to do that, go to google.com, check in the top right corner, make sure that you see your name up here, and if it doesn't, and you have the sign in button, click on it, put in your email, your password, and then you'll be good to go. The next thing you can do is click on the apps icon. And if you click on that, you'll find Google Sites. But if you don't see sites in that drop down menu, you can always just go up here and type in sites dot new and this is a fun new shortcut that i found that you can use to create a new site real quick so here i am a brand new site blank generic template and i want to start by naming my site you are not going to name your site at the title you're actually going to name it here on the top left corner i'm going to call this technology instruction and you'll see that it's now saved automatically in the top left corner. And that is my site file name, technology instruction. And if I go back to my Google Drive, I'll see under my recents that I've created this new site, technology instruction. And now I can start building my website. The first thing I'm gonna do now is put in my titles. Welcome everyone. Now that I have my title all set, I want to get a text box inserted into our website. If you go look at the right hand side, there's a column with insert text box, images, embed, drive, different layouts, and a whole bunch more of different options. But if I just want to add a text box, all I need to do is click text box. And it creates this box right here where you can type anything you want. And you can also, just like in a Google Doc, change the font, the size, what its position is, and so much more. You'll see over here on the left-hand side some more tools, such as section background. And if you click on that little easel or palette right there, you can have different styles for your background. If I click this blue, it automatically changes the style to have a white font as well. But if I, if I click it again, I go to image, I can upload my own image or I can select an image that they have already preset here in the gallery, which is really fun. If you wanna search, you can just click search and it does a Google image search for whatever you wanna use for your background selection. Of course, you can also use something from your Google Photos or something directly from your drive. I'm gonna search here for the word technology. Let's see what pops up. Well, this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna click on this and I'm now gonna click select. And now you can see here that the image has automatically positioned itself to be the background and it's changed the font right here. Now you can always change the font yourself, but you don't really have the access or ability to change that background and move what it was in the picture. You're stuck kind of with what they have given you, but at least you have the ability to find something new or if you really need to edit something in Google Photos or in slides to get the exact dimensions that you want so that when you upload it, it will look exactly how you're looking for. But that is more of a pro level move. Now let's look at inserting an image. I wanna put a Google image right here below this. So if I click here on images, I'm gonna click upload or select. I want to select something again from a Google image search. I'm just gonna type in the word Google logo. And now I have all these different things that I could choose from. I'm gonna pick this cool one right here. I like that, it's really cool. Now I can click insert and it's going to insert that logo right into the website. Now you have a whole lot of options with what you can do with this image. You can click, drag it, reposition it within that section. Now you can see here that I have two sections. First was this text box, and if I hover my mouse over it, I can see I have these two vertical columns of dots, and that's like the grab button. So if I click it, I can take it, grab, drag, drop it, and now it's below the image section that I have. Now with this image, it looks too big for me. I wanna shrink it down, and you can do that by clicking on the image, and you get these little dots around this blue box. If you click on the corner, drag and drop, you can resize it move it to wherever you want, and even if you're feeling kind of crazy, take it, drop it, and even put it in another section, like right there. Pretty fancy, some of the things that you can do here. One more topic here I wanted to cover with the inserting part is the drive icon. And if you click on drive, you can pull up anything on your drive and insert it directly into this website. So let's say, for example, I want to pull something like this lamb to the slaughter, um, document that I was working on earlier. 
and I have to fill this vocabulary worksheet. And if I want to put it on my website for students to see, now that I've clicked on it, double clicked on it right from my drive, you can see it's inserted the doc so that it's actually what it looks like. You can see right from the website. You don't have to click in and then go into the doc to look at it. It's a little bit easier to see that. And you can do that with sheets, forms, slides, docs, all kinds of fun things. Now to get out, you're just gonna click this X right here and you get that toolbar where you have your insert and there's so many more fun things and we're gonna cover this in another video such as collapsible text, the table of contents, the image carousel, pretty cool. It's like an automatic slideshow that you have. You can add into your web page. But before we go, I just wanna cover one more thing and that is pages because within one site, you can have multiple pages in your site. So for example, you click on pages. Now we have the home site and that is the technology instruction home web page that we have. But within here, I want to create different subtopics. For example, I'm going to click the plus and that's going to give me a new page. And I'm going to add this new page as Google me. I'm going to click done and you'll see that I now have the home, which is the home icon, but a page within right underneath actually the home, which is the Google Meet. And if you look over here, I can have this toolbar. This toolbar automatically pops up where I can go home or to Google Meet. Now I have my two pages within one site, but now I want to create another page. If I click the plus, I'm going to create this as how to add to Gmail. Now when I click done, you can see here that it's within line with the home and the other page, Google Meet. It's also right here, how to add to Gmail. But I want this page right here, how to add to Gmail, to be within the Google Meet page, a sub page. So all I want to do is click, drag, and drop it right within Google Meet. You'll now see that it's indented to the right and it's now a sub page. So if I go back up here, I have my home. I have my Google Meet and there's a new drop down box where I can go how to add to Gmail. If I add another page saying test and do done, you'll see here that I accidentally put it as another sub page with Google Meet. I don't want it to be a sub page. I want it to be another little icon, another page that would appear right up here. So if I click drag drop and pulled it out within that Google Meet uh, page, now I can drag drop, there it is down below, and you can see up here, home, Google Meet, and test. I hope that this helped you out, and if you like this, let me know down in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, it helps out the channel a lot, and I'm hopefully gonna have another Google Sites video in the near future with all those new fancy, new, cool things that you can do to make your website pop, make it really fun, and all that cool stuff. So thanks again, don't forget to work hard, play hard, and I'll see you next time.